Okay, this is Scientist Cindy, and we are going to do a walkthrough of the heart model. Okay, this is the largest heart model that you're going to need to know for your practical exam. Okay, so this entire thing is the heart, and um, we have four chambers. We have the and remember, we're in anatomical position, right? So it is switched. The, um, this would actually be the right side of the heart, and this would be the left side of the heart. Okay. So this area here, so this is going to be the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium and the left ventricle. The base of the heart would be this top fatter part and the apex is going to be the pointed region down here, the apex of the heart. Okay, let's talk about some of these structures and um, how they work with the flow of blood through the heart. So let's go ahead and start with the blood um, as it has already gone around the body. As it has gone around the body, it has given off its oxygen, it has taken up its carbon dioxide. So at this point, um, it's got low pressure because it's been a while since it's gotten its last push from the heart and it is now deoxygenated and it will return to the heart. So that deoxygenated blood from the body is gonna to return to the heart and it's going to go into the right atrium. The blood from the upper portion of the body is going to travel down here through the superior vena cava. Just this area here is the superior vena cava. Blood from the lower part of your body is going to enter that same right atrium and the pathway it's going to take is going to be the inferior vena cava, the inferior vena cava. So deoxygenated blood from the body enters into the right atrium using the superior and inferior vena cava. Now, once that deoxygenated blood is in the right atrium, it then is going to travel through a valve that we can't see here, but the name of that valve is the tricuspid valve. From there, it's going to travel into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, the heart is going to contract, which is going to push that blood out of the heart it passes another valve at that point. It's going to pass through the pulmonary semilunar valve, which we will see when we peel this guy open. After it goes through the pulmonary semilunar valve, it's going to go to this region here. The first region that we see here is called the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk is an artery. Remember, arteries by definition are going away from the heart. So this is the pulmonary trunk. Now the pulmonary trunk is going to branch off. Okay. The pulmonary trunk branches off to form the right pulmonary artery. And I think it's easier if I flip it around back. And the other branch is here. Okay, so you can see one on one side. And this is the other branch here. And this is the left pulmonary artery. Okay. So left pulmonary artery is here. And if we can also do it on the other side too. So the top blue one here is going to be the right pulmonary artery. So the pulmonary arteries are going to send that deoxygenated blood to the lungs. As that blood passes through the lungs, it's going to give, give up its carbon dioxide. It's going to um, 
It's going to gain oxygen molecules and it's going to now become oxygenated blood. So that oxygenated blood now is going to return to the heart from the lungs. So from the lungs, that oxygenated blood is going to travel through the pulmonary veins. These are on the right side of the body. So these are the right pulmonary veins. The right pulmonary veins are going to carry oxygenated blood from the right lung through the right pulmonary veins and that blood will end up here in the left atrium. Okay. Now on the left side, we have the left pulmonary veins. The left pulmonary veins are going to carry oxygenated blood from the left lung, and it's also going to go to the same left atrium. <clears throat> so, just to recap, deoxygenated blood from the body is always going to be entering the right atrium. Now, when we're talking about the left atrium like we are now, the left atrium is always going to be receiving oxygenated blood from the lungs. So, once it is here, then it's going to pass through a valve, which we can't see here, but the name of that valve is the mitral valve, or the bicuspid valve is another name for that, and it will enter the left ventricle. At that point, the ventricle will contract, which is going to push blood up into the aorta. When it pushes up from the left ventricle into the aorta, it passes another valve. This valve is the aortic semilunar valve. And we'll see those valves when we peel this thing open. Okay, this entire area here in red is the aorta. Okay, it's got more of it on this side too. Now, the aorta has some different regions. We call this point here the ascending aorta because here the blood will be ascending in the body. From about this point here, where you see these three superior branches uh, coming off, this region that is associated with these branches, this is called the aortic arch, the aortic arch. After the aortic arch, this is going to continue to go downward. Remember, this is all um, the aorta, but these are all different segments of the aorta. <clears throat> this now will become the descending aorta. The descending aorta is going to continue to go down to the lower portions of the body. The function of the aorta is to send oxygenated blood to the body. These three branches here are responsible for sending blood to the upper portions of the body, whereas the descending portion of the aorta is going to continue to go down and send blood to the lower regions of the body. Okay. So once it has gone to the body, it's then um, going to be depleted of its oxygen again. It's going to become deoxygenated and it's going to enter again. So let's just talk about a couple of these um, more peripheral arteries and veins that I have not covered yet. So <clears throat> as the blood travels back to the heart from the body, once it's deoxygenated again, here, um, there's a couple structures here I want to name this time. This is the superior vena cava. But the superior vena cava um, is formed from two branches that come together. These two branches are called the brachiocephalic veins, okay? The one on the left side 
of the heart would be the left brachiocephalic vein. The one on the right side of the heart will be the right brachiocephalic vein. And if you think about the name, brachio means arm, cephalic means head. So these veins are going to, um, the right one, sorry, the right one is going to bring blood from the head, neck, and right arm. Sorry, the right side of the head and neck and the right arm. Whereas the left brachiocephalic vein is going to be bringing blood from the left side of the head and neck and the left arm. So let's talk about a couple of these. Um, let's talk about these regions here, which I have not yet gone over. Okay, so we know that this is the ascending aorta. As it begins to arch where these uh, three branches are, this is the aortic arch. The first artery coming branching off of the aortic arch. Now remember, these are the brachiocephalic veins. So if you can remember that, then it's easier to remember that this right next to it is the brachiocephalic trunk. Now the brachiocephalic trunk is an artery. And this actually will continue and it will branch off into two different arteries. Okay. One of those arteries is going to be um, the right common carotid artery, which is going to feed oxygenated blood to the head and neck regions, to the right side of the head and neck. The other branch that is going to come off of this brachiocephalic artery, I'm sorry, brachiocephalic trunk is going to be the right subclavian artery. The right subclavian artery is going to send that oxygenated blood to the right arm. Okay, so the second, this is now the second artery that is branching superior from the aortic arch. This is the left common carotid artery. Okay. The left common carotid artery is going to send oxygenated blood to the left side of the head and neck. Okay. And this last one here, <clears throat> the third and last of the branches that come off of the aortic arch, this is going to be the left subclavian artery. The left subclavian artery is going to send oxygenated blood to the left arm. Okay. All right, just a couple more features on the surface before we peel him open. Um, this little area right here, this area which is labeled 13 in this particular model, this is the um, ligamentum arteriosum, which means arterial ligament. And this tiny structure here is actually a, um, a leftover remnant of a structure in the fetus that allowed the blood to bypass the lungs, which makes sense because in the infant, the lungs are inactive. The baby doesn't take a full breath until after it is born. So there's no need for the, um, for the body to go through the hassle of pumping it through the lungs. But after the baby is born, um, the structure of the heart is then changed so that blood is directed towards the lungs so it can get oxygenated. But in the womb, the umbilical cord takes care of all of that stuff and the mother supplies all of the oxygen and nutrients needed for the baby's blood. Okay. Um, there's also some arteries that you, uh, veins and arteries that you need to know here on the surface. <clears throat> now you have a right and left um, coronary artery. Okay? Um, coronary means heart and the heart itself needs its own blood supply. Okay, so this here is the right coronary artery. Let's go around here. In red, the right coronary artery that comes down here. Right coronary artery. 
Now, as I flip this over, just this area here is going to be the left coronary artery. Okay. Now, the left coronary artery branches off to form two additional branches. Okay. And this is the uh, circumflex artery or the circumflex in red here or the circumflex branch of the coronary artery, of the left coronary artery. Now, if I go straight, this is another branch of the left coronary artery. And this branch here is the anterior interventricular branch of the left coronary artery. So this branch here in blue this is a vein, and we call it the great cardiac vein. Now, as you follow the great cardiac vein around, it is going to join with other veins. It's going to get a little fatter, and it will end up forming a very large, oops, a very large vein called the coronary sinus. The coronary sinus. Okay, <clears throat> and perfect timing because I was going to take this off anyways. Oh, one more thing I want to show you here. Okay, on the practical exam, it's possible they could ask about the layers of, this, of the heart wall. The outermost layer of the heart wall would be any of this area here. This would be the epi, meaning upper, the epicardium. Now this has a little square taken away so that I can see the layer that is underneath the epicardium. This would be the myocardium. The myocardium, which means the uh, cardiac muscle layer. Okay. Now, if I were to um, ask you what the innermost layer of the wall of the heart you would need to say that that would be the endocardium. Okay. Now remember, this is the outside of the heart, but since I'm flipping it over, our right and left are now going to be reversed from what I was telling you before. Okay, so let's go over some of these structures here. So now um, my right side of the heart is going to be on my right side, where before it was reversed. So this is going to be the right atrium, okay? The right atrium. Remember, this is where the deoxygenated blood comes in from the body. This area, let me get a little closer here. <clears throat> okay. There is a septum that separates the chambers from each other, okay? The septum that separates the right and left atrium or atria is called the interatrial septum. Okay. Now, as I go down further, these are now the two different ventricles. This is the right ventricle and the left ventricle. And the wall that separates them is the interventricular septum. So that makes sense. Okay. Now, in the right, so remember blood comes here first, deoxygenated blood from the body. And then it's going to go through the tricuspid valve. Well, here's the tricuspid valve that I was talking about. Um, let me flip this over, okay. So this is the tricuspid valve that you see here if I tilt it forward. Blood goes through the tricuspid valve. Now. You have these things, these uh, things in white here, these are actually the heart strings. Um, they have a fancy name, which is the chordae tendini. These chordae tendini are also attached to the papillary muscles, which are shown here in brown. These papillary muscles, along with the chordae tendini, are going to function to make sure that this valve opens when it's supposed to open and that it's closed when it's supposed to be closed. 
So this is going to cause this to open and close along with the heartbeat. Okay. All right. Now, once the blood gets into, goes through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle, at this point, it is going to go through another valve. This is the pulmonary semilunar valve, okay, which goes to the pulmonary trunk. Alrighty. And then, as we learned before, it goes through the pulmonary trunk to the pulmonary arteries, to the lungs, to the pulmonary veins, and then back to the heart. When it comes back to the heart, it is oxygenated. So that oxygenated blood coming from the lungs is going to go to the heart and it's going to go to this chamber here. Now this chamber here is the left atrium and that blood is then going to go through this valve here. This is the mitral valve, otherwise known as the bicuspid valve. All right. Here in white, I've got the chordae tendonine. Here are the papillary muscles. Blood is going to uh, wait for the valve to open and then it's going to go through and it's going to end up in the left ventricle. All right. Now, the left ventricle is then going to contract. When the left ventricle contracts, it's going to, that blood is now going to leave the heart and go into the aorta. So in this model, um, the valve that leads to the aorta is only on the other portion. So let me bring that portion over. <clears throat> okay. And let me go ahead and hold you there real quick, just so I can show you what those same structures that I just talked about, what they look like on this side of the model. All right. So this is the superior vena cava. This is the right atrium. Okay. So in the right atrium here, this area here would be considered the interatrial septum. Okay. This would be the interventricular septum. This is the other portion of that valve that we saw on the other part. Okay. So this is the tricuspid valve, the tricuspid valve, the chordae tendini, the papillary muscles, the entire thing would be the right ventricle. All right. And we saw on the other side, um, the it then goes, goes through the pulmonary semilunar valve, through to the pulmonary trunk, to the pulmonary arteries, to the lungs, to the pulmonary veins, and then back to the heart, which would go to the left atrium. Now on the left atrium, here is that heart valve. This is the bicuspid valve, uh, more commonly known as the mitral valve. Okay, these are the chordae tendini on this side. And underneath it, the darker, more brownish portions um, are the papillary muscles. This entire area would be the left ventricle. Now, the left ventricle is going to contract, and now we're back where I was when I changed sides. Okay. So at this point, that blood is now going to go through this structure here. This is the aortic semilunar valve. And as you would expect, it goes to the aorta. And this entire structure is the aorta. Okay. This is the ascending aorta, the aortic arch. These are the branches that are going to go to the upper portions of the body.